Hello, welcome back. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at how we can add a coin system so we can add points to our game like this. If that's something you want to make, then keep watching because we're going to see how. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is to create a coin for ourselves. So we can go ahead and insert a cylinder into the map. And we'll move it over here, resize it a bit so it's a little bit more uh, coin shaped. And we'll make it sort of about that big. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. That looks quite big. How about that size? That looks good to me. We'll pop that over there. And we'll just place that right there. Make sure it's anchored. Uh, we're going to turn the cannon collide off. We don't really need that. And inside of it, let's add a little script. And we're going to have a function coin pickup. And we're simply going to put uh, a printout coin picked up so we know it's working. And then we're going to destroy. We want to remove the part, we want to remove the coin. So we're going to say script.parent and call this function destroy. Then go down here. So we activate this uh, function and we're going to say script.parent.touched. So when this touched event uh, is triggered, then we want to connect it with this function, the coin pickup function. So hopefully, if we go ahead and we play now. I'll come here and spawn in. If I run over to this coin and I touch it, yep, it's disappeared and we can see down the output, it says coin picked up, which is exactly what we wanted. So if we want to have some kind of tally, um, we need something to count them with. Now, I could just have some kind of variable here. I could have count equals zero and then I could add to the count down here but if I did that I wouldn't be it be harder to track it between the different coins so what I might want to do is to add in a integer value so if I put that into workspace here a value you see it's currently zero we could rename this to points if we want and then down in the script instead of saying simply coin picked up we are going to say workspace dot points dot value. That's important that you put value and not just uh, points. Points dot value because it's the value property down here that we want to change equals. And then we don't want it to equals one. We want it to be equal to its current value plus one. And then why don't we print out? We can say points space and then after the string we add dot dots two dots and then we can print out the value of workspace dot points and if we go ahead and actually before you run let's duplicate that so we put in one two three and we'll have a fourth one up here so let's go ahead and run the game now And we can look in workspace, we can see points is currently zero. Let's go ahead and we touch the first one. And it's, we see down the output points one. And we can see down here on our integer value also says points one. Touch the next one, two, three, four. Fantastic. So we're now able to track in our game's logic how many points the player scored. But if the player's just playing the game, they're not going to be able to see anything. So how about we add a GUI or GUI, graphical user interface. So if we head down here, start a GUI, we can add in, we can click screen GUI and add in a text label. And the text label, we can move it into the center of the screen here. We'll make the background fully transparent for that one. We'll make the text say points. We'll 
make it a bit bigger, say 30. And we'll change the font a bit. How about fantasy font? Gotham semi bold, that looks quite nice. Size 40 font. And we'll make the color a kind of yellowish, I think. Okay. And then we're going to need a script. Put a script inside here. And this time we're going to have another function. Function uh, update points. And this function is going to be called by saying uh, workspace dot points that points object that we just created and there's an event for this called dot changed this is similar to the dot touched event um, another event so whenever the value of this changes then this will be triggered and then when that happens we want to connect with our update points function and in here all we're going to say is script dot parent dot text is going to be equal to uh, the value of workspace dot points dot value um, but we also want it to say points as well so let's add in points colon space end quote dot dot workspace dot points dot value so let's go ahead and test that. So say points right there at the top. Choose the first one, points one, two, three, and four. So now the user can see how many points they've got. Fantastic. One thing you might have seen that a lot of games have is they have a little leaderboard over here on the right. Now, if we want to add something like that, all we need to do is, uh, we need to set one up first. So it also uses a int value similar to the R one we created, but it's on the uh, player's end rather than just being inside workspace. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up another script now, and we'll put this inside server script service. Um, you could put your, your scripts in the workspace, but server script service is essentially an area that we can just put any scripts we want and it stops them getting in the way really. So we'll put a script in here this time and we're going to write another script called setup and this one is going to be called whenever the player enters the game. So we'll put game dot players uh, dot player added connect setup. Um, and then inside here, we're going to create a leaderboard. So we're going to say instance dot new. Oh, and we also need to make sure that our setup function has a parameter of player. So before we do anything else, let's just check that this part works. So we print out player and hopefully I should see my username when I now play the game. Yep. There it is down there. Name code. So I know it's working. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and finish this script off. So we want to create, we're going to put instance.new and we're going to create a folder. Create a folder and it's, uh, let's uh, give it a variable first so we can access it. We'll call it uh, leader stats. Now this is quite important what you actually call this. Uh, we'll make it local because leader stats dot name has to be called leader stats for this to work. If it doesn't, Roblox won't actually recognize it. Uh, and then the parent is simply gonna be the player, which is the parameter we've passed into this function. And then inside of the leader stats folder, we're gonna have a value, which in this case is gonna be our points. So we're gonna create a, another instance, so instance, dot new and this time it's going to be an int value just like we had in our workspace so it's the same thing but it's going to be individual to the player now 
and then we're going to have new the line points dot name equals points if you're wondering what's going on here um the variable name is something that's only relevant to this code here so if i didn't define the name um it would just be called its default class name which would so it just be called in value you see when you go and add stuff in uh they're just called parts by default but their name is uh what you can call it so we can call that anything we like but points is what we want to be displayed in the leaderboard so we'll call it points and then we need to set the parent so points.parent equals leader stats and then we can put a starting value for it if we want um, but in this case we're going to start the player off with zero points so whenever the player is added to the game then this is going to set up so let's go ahead and play now and see if that works for us we've got yeah zero points up on the leaderboard here but now when we go and um, pick these coins up well that's not updating what we need to do is we need to adjust our scripts for that so let's head into our scripts and this time instead of saying workspace.points um, we need to access the part of the player so we need to make sure we have that parameter we'll say uh, part touched will be the parameter whenever um, or part touching whenever these connect uh, event is the touch site event is called it sends the name of the part that's touching it so if we just print out so you can see what's going on print the part touching and we play again you'll notice down the output here we should see handle so we got handle there um that would be our hat i think and if we jumped on top of it we would get our right lower leg you see was the contact that time so what we'll need to check is that the part touching we'll say if part touching dot uh parent find first child and we're going to look for humanoid then we'll continue if it does not find the humanoid then we know that it is not a player character so we go ahead and play now and it still continues so we know that's working because it is finding humanoid um and then this time we want to get, go part touching dot parent and we're going to use a function get player from character make sure we spelt that right uh we'll, we'll create a variable for this local player equals and then now we need to say player dot uh, dot leader stats dot points dot value equals player dot leader stats dot points to value plus one and we can still keep that print statement if we want so let's go ahead and run now see if that works for us uh, get player from character is not a valid member of model okay Ah, so where we went wrong here is we uh, actually called the function on uh, part touching dot parent. That was actually a mistake. That's the argument or the parameter to the function. We want to call this function on on uh, players. So we put game dot players, and then once we have these the player service, we call the function get player from character, and we use the parent of the part that's touching. So if it's the the right leg that's touching the parent of that will be the character's model so we go ahead and we run that now hopefully we should see the points in the right update here and there we go that's updated now it's not going to work for all of these yet because we haven't uh, updated those scripts they've all got the old script so if we delete the scripts from there and then we can copy and paste this into 
our new ones. When we go ahead and play now. It should do it for all of them. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. And the last thing we need to do then is to fix our uh, screen GUI right here. Now, I used a server script the first time. But what we'd be better off doing now is actually using a local script. So I've uh, cut the contents of this script. I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to insert in a local script. And instead of saying workspace.points, I can access the players this time. So if we put local player equals game.players.local player, and then we can say player.leader stats dot points dot change connect update points and then we'll also let's move that up here at the top nice story variables at the top and then it makes it easier to update this because this is referring to workspace dot points we don't want that so we'll change that to player dot leader stats dot points we'll go in and play again and hopefully now when we touch this it should update yeah one two three four and there we go, we've got it updating here and over here. And we could add a few more in if we wanted. All we've got to do is copy and paste them now. So that's nice and easy to do. And if we wanted, we could raise a few off the ground to make it look a bit more fancy. And there we have it. We have our very own coin system with points. Five and six coins. I think our game is now starting to take shape, but we're going to need to add a few more elements yet. So make sure you stay tuned for the next part. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>